lesson four of our health and performance unit, we're going to be spending some time today on marijuana use and its impact on performance. Just like the past couple of lessons, when we think about health and wellness, we want to think about these are the choices I make on, on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so when we're thinking about the use of marijuana or any substance, it falls into this category. Unless something is prescribed to me, I am choosing to use, I'm choosing to engage in that type of activity. So just like in the past, we talked about the base of this pyramid, our health and wellness base, the wider it is and the thicker it is with great choices, the more I can stack on top, which are trainable aspects in the weight room with the physical, on the field with my technical and tactical work, and, on, and just overall mentally handling positives and negatives. Remember, we're trying to build these components over time, over my career, so that I'm working toward a level of high performance, which is consistently executing what I'm responsible to do, okay? So when we think about marijuana or essentially any type of substance, it's important to think about maybe the two different types of use of a substance. Okay, so for, for us in a university town, um, regardless actually of where you are, um, whether it's a rural setting or an urban setting, these two will, will hold true for us. When we think about recreational use of any type of drug okay, or, or substance, it is essentially use or choosing to use the substance without any type of medical rationale, okay? So there doesn't exist a prescription. We've oftentimes not talked to a physician. It's my choice to use it, oftentimes for fun, uh, maybe for pleasure, or essentially for a purpose, maybe that I've even self-diagnosed, okay? That is opposite of medicinal. Medicinal is something that is prescribed to me from a physician or a medical worker that is legal, and it's essentially um, either dispensed at a uh, pharmacy or a venue that's legally allowed to dispense it to, to people. So, so in th this case, we're going to spend the majority of our time talking about recreational use. There's two different types of compounds found in marijuana and cannabis that we're going to talk about. First is THC and second is CBD. We know a little bit more about THC than we do CBD. Okay. THC is thought to be the primary component that's going to cause the effects that I feel from smoking or ingesting marijuana. We've talked about in the past, too, that um, largely it has an impact on our nervous system. So whenever something happens inside my body, its movement is regulated um, by, my, by my nervous system. It, I can have voluntary movement where I'm actively thinking about, you know, doing a bicep curl, running really fast, catching a pass, or I can have involuntary responses, you know, digestion, breathing, inhalation, um, things that just are occurring over time. But essentially what's occurring is a small electrical signal is coming from my brain down my nerve system, all the way down to the working muscle and causing the contraction. As different neurons connect, we talked about this and equated it to a train on a train track. There's small gaps in between cars on a train track. Same thing with neurons. There's a small gap, we'll call it the synaptic cleft. The cleft is the small space in between where the electrical signal jumps across to get to the next neuron. THC actively invades that area. And because it's presence, because of its presence, it slows down the signal. So because of that, some of my functioning uh, can be delayed, such as reaction time. Uh, my overall focus on certain areas can also be changed because of this, okay? But also in our brain, things are occurring too. THC presence in the brain can really impact my ability to learn and retain memory over time. I had mentioned focus. So because I have THC in my brain, sometimes I can actually have a distorted perception of my environment, maybe the classroom, maybe the meeting room, maybe even on the field, okay? And then it's going to impact some posture, reaction time. I'm going to be slow to make um, decisions over time. An interesting thing with dopamine. Dopamine is a, a chemical in my body that is released when, as almost like a reward response. Okay, so think about something that is, that is fun. If I like to ride roller coasters um, and I get excitement over that, there's going to be a dopamine response um, that just makes me want to do it even more. If I like to eat pizza, 
okay and i you know i crush a pizza and i enjoy it there's a dopamine response if i like to drive really fast if i like to hit a home run or if i like to make a big time tackle there's a dopamine response there because it's gonna really push me to do it again when i have thc in my system the dopamine response is exponentially higher than normal and so now when i get that sensation of a heightened dopamine response it's like getting double the presence on Christmas. I want it more and more and more and more. So then when I'm not under the influence of marijuana and I don't have THC in my, in my system and I eat the pizza or I drive faster and make the tackle, I might not have the exact same reward internally. And I may uh, actively kind of seek that out even more. Okay. Down here at the bottom too, we got some other impacts just on performance. Not, not only with the slowed reaction time and the altered perception of what's going on, even balance, but THC in my body can slow down or change heart rate. That will in turn change cardio or cardiac function. So it's changing the way blood is delivered in my body. And if you understand the physiology of your body, I need blood flowing throughout my body to bring oxygenated blood to the working muscles and also to get rid of waste. So because that slows that down and changes that, it's going to change my, my ability to perform on the field. Okay. Now, when we think about CBD, this is an interesting molecule, and it's really picked up in terms of how we are studying this in athletic performance and, and in the medical community. It's not as, as well studied as THC, and frankly, we don't have all the answers. And, and, and that can sometimes be scary, okay? It is the second most prevalent uh, component found in cannabis, but it is non-psychoactive, meaning that it does not produce the, the feelings that you're gonna get from the THC. It's thought because it binds a little bit different than THC does, that it's not gonna cause those effects of euphoria and, and things that may be common with, with uh, typical marijuana use or with THC being present in the body, okay? Now, THC, I'm sorry, CBD is used quite, quite often in the medical community um, because it binds to some of the receptors in the nervous system that causes um, maybe our pain response, the way we perceive pain to maybe slow down a little bit. Okay, it's inflammation, same kind of deal. And this is kind of where it's up for debate. We just don't know enough yet to definitively say that this is happening. These are just theory at this point okay but basically what they're thinking is the cb1 receptors are attacking central nervous system components and that's slowing down things like appetite memory mood and things like that so uh, patients that are um, maybe suffering from parkinson's where there's some things going on in the brain when the cbd is present in the central nervous system it may slow things down so they're not having episodes um, you know, if someone that has big time mood swings, CBD, when it's attaching to the CB1 receptors may actually slow it down. So it actually calms down the mood on, in the peripheral nervous system. The same thing. Let's say there's a, there's a patient that's had pain for a long, long period of time. It's it, the theory is that CBD actually binds to the receptors that are responsible uh, for some of those pain or inflammation and slows it down and it gives the patient relief. Now, the problem is, is it's just unfounded to the point where it's broadcast across all different types of patients. We're still learning the impacts of what this does in the, in the short term and especially the long term. The thing too about CBD, which is interesting, is that the location that, it, that, it's, that it's sold. Obviously in certain states, it's dispensed in different areas that's maybe regulated by government, by um, any type of um, you know, legislation that, that's kind of protecting what's in that. There's also different states, different areas that you can find CBD or CBD-like products that may not be regulated. And that's the scary thing. Okay? Much like other drugs and other substances, we have to be very, very careful. Okay? So the final thing is, Anything that we do, uh, whether it's going out with buddies, whether it's just driving really fast, like I mentioned, or, 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 or lifting weights, it, it exists with a degree of risk. Okay? So I just have to make decisions. So when we're thinking about marijuana use, 
um, any substance use, we need to understand that it is going to have an impact on my performance. I cannot get around that. It will impact my performance. I need to have the ability now to be mature enough to make the decision. Am I willing to make, take the risk? Um, you know, what does the risk reward look like for me? Okay, so take THC. You know, if I smoke marijuana, obviously you're gonna um, get the feeling of the high but is it worth the risk of losing eligibility? Um, is it worth the risk of impacting my performance? So does the reward outweigh the risk? When I'm thinking about using other products, maybe some of the, T, the CBD products, okay, we just don't know enough about it. So is the risk of the unknown worth the reward that is unfounded potentially, okay? And then I think if we're ever doing certain things for performance enhancement, we need to think about what are the things that I'm doing that cost me nothing and that have minimal or no risk at all. Am I sleeping right? Am I eating right? Am I making proper decision, decisions that can really lay the great foundation? What we're talking about is essentially one and a, okay? Every decision, I'm going to have a checkbox. I'm either going to get a win or I'm going to get a loss. What we're trying to do is stack more wins, more better days, more better decisions, more better choices than we are in the loss column. So, so every decision we make, let's think about one and nine.